a lot of those fees are usually built into the fund that are, you know, the funds that are available in your plan. And so you may never even see them. It's time for the My Retirement Clarity Podcast with Lee Perkins, financial planner and president of JL Perkins Wealth Management. Get ready for a good dose of inspiration, simplicity, implementation, and of course, clarity on how to successfully prepare for retirement and grow and preserve your wealth. Here's Ben George with Lee Perkins. Well, glad to have you here on My Retirement Clarity. Got a good show for you today. Five 401k mistakes you need to avoid. Lee, I know we're kind of heading into a new year as we're recording this, and I know you know, people are looking for some goals for the new year. I mean, this is maybe a good place to start, right? Maybe kind of cleaning up the 401k and making sure you avoid some of these key mistakes. Yeah, I think sometimes towards the end of the year, people start thinking about those New Year's resolutions and maybe wanting to kick the next year off on the, the right foot. And believe it or not, every once in a while, people glance at the 401k plan and say, all right, what do I need to do different this year? So, yeah, we'll talk about a few things that you, you want to avoid as you head into the new year. Should be a good show. Should Hopefully you'll learn a few things along the way and hopefully avoid these mistakes with your 401k. How's everything else? Leave the house in good shape now? I know we've been talking about the kind of tracking that progress. Yeah, so we've we were actually moved into the house as of our recording day here. We've been in now two weeks, so all the boxes are unpacked except for the couple that we took upstairs to the one bedroom that's upstairs. Uh, we will sort through that in in a, you know, at some point, but those are not necessary contents in those boxes, I assume. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's great living uh, living in our own house again. I never want to go back to an apartment. You did that for four for four months and don't want to do it again. <laughs> How's the stress level? Has it come down now a little bit? Yeah, yep. I think it's good. Uh, my wife still has two more days of school. Um, she teaches kindergarten and they are... She said they're completely out of control just because of the, all of the excitement leading up to Christmas. Yeah. So not a lot of productivity, but yes, yeah, she will, her, her stress level will be very good tomorrow about two o'clock. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad you'll be able to enjoy that uh, through the holidays and, and get to watch maybe your bulldogs from the new house. That'll be a lot of Absolutely. fun. Absolutely. Yeah. I can't wait. I actually going to go today and buy a big TV for the outside deck. So hoping, nice. hopefully we have some friends over on uh, New Year's Eve to watch that semifinal game. That's going to be great. Well, let's get into the show today. Again, if you have questions for us, the best place to start, you can schedule a meeting right now. Just go to talkwithlee.com. Uh, get on Lee's calendar. It's very simple, very easy to do. And if you want to call, you can do that as well. 478-254-3550 for JL Perkins Wealth Management there in Macon. But we're talking the top five 401k mistakes you need to avoid. And you know, the reason why we want to talk about this is because many, many people use the 401k for a savings tool for retirement, but it's very easy to use, very painless, which also means we tend to forget about it for a long period of time. So we want to avoid these mistakes that kind of happen when we kind of ignore it or just put it aside because we don't think we need to be doing anything with it for a while. So let's start off with uh, with people that have maybe been leaving their job and moving on to a new job. We're seeing this a lot right now, right? Starting with you know a new career somewhere with a new company. That four, what that old former four hundred one k plan that you have with the old employer, should you roll that over, Lee? Is that a mistake people make? Is just kind of leave it sitting there? Yeah, it is a, and it's a pretty common occurrence. I see people do this all the time when when they leave a job, they sort of kind of forget about it and move on in, into the new job, and and all of a sudden they wake up three, four, or five years later, and they still are getting a monthly statement from the old four hundred one k. So, I think it makes sense uh, to go ahead and move that 401k to an IRA, I could probably do an entire show on 401ks versus IRAs. There's a lot to cover there, pros and cons of each. But the you know, reason I would tell you once once you leave a place, move it to an IRA, you've really got more flexibility in that IRA than you do from a 401k. First of all, inside of an IRA, man, you can invest in whatever you want. You've got a a huge variety of investment options. You can invest in stocks, bonds, uh, mutual funds, gold, ETFs, real estate, just, just about anything you could possibly want to invest in. You can have that inside of your IRA. But inside of your 401k, you really just have sort of a, a menu of investment options to choose from. Um, some plans have 
you know, a few more options than others, but for the most part, all of those options are, are pretty similar. Now, that being said, I, I do want to make sure that you're 100% clear on when you should leave a portion of that 401k there. Um, and that's, you know, if, you, if you're retiring and you're over 55, you, you probably want to leave some 401k there. I don't want to get into too much details there, but okay. that's really because you've got some access inside the 401k prior to age 59 and a half without going, you know, paying a 10% penalty to the IRS. So, so again, I would tell you if you've got a 401k and you've left the job, but you are over 55 before you, you make that decision to move all the money over, you may want to sit down and talk with an advisor who can tell you why you should maybe leave some of it in the 401k and then move some of it to an IRA. Yeah, that's a good point. So not everybody needs to move it for sure, but it is a mistake that a lot of people make that that haven't sat down and, and had a plan for what they want to do with that money. So uh, that's the first one that we have here. All right, number two, rebalancing. So I know with, as we kind of laid into this, like we and I know I'm guilty of it. I just put my money in there and just contribute, contribute, contribute. And say, hey, you know, one day I'll tap into this, but we need to be rebalancing, right? I'm, I'm guessing most people kind of fail to do this very frequently. Yeah, and I, and I think people fail to realize just the the real value of systematic rebalancing in a, in a portfolio. And to me, failing to rebalance, it's got several consequences. Um, first of all, there are studies out there that have shown that consistent rebalancing it, it really does lead to increased portfolio performance. And 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 this is the reason that you know, rebalancing and what rebalancing does, it, it causes you to automatically sell high and buy low. You know, sometimes when markets are volatile, like they are right now, you know, I'll ask, I'll have people ask me, uh, they'll say, Hey Lee, do we need to change things up? You know, because of what's going on in the markets right now. Um, and most of the times, you know, uh, unless there's a significant change in their, their objective, um, man, we don't have to blow the whole plan up and start over because the money managers that we've hired to run our portfolios, they've got a systematic rebalancing schedule. Um, so, so think about it this way, Ben, and I, I'd sort of kind of draw a picture sometimes when I'm talking to people, but you know, we're sort of picturing a pie here. So suppose you've got a portfolio that's it's just a simple 50% stocks and 50% bonds. And, and that's the allocation that you're comfortable with. Well, if the stock market is increasing and, and doing well, you know, stocks might wind up being 60% of your overall allocation and bonds would be 40%. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's great because your account's up, but now you've got more equity exposure than you signed up for. So then the money managers will rebalance, meaning they sell some of those stocks while the value is high. And then they buy some bonds while the prices are low. So now you own more shares of the bonds. And so it's really the same thing in a down market. If your equities dropped significantly in value, and maybe now they only represent 40% of that portfolio and the bonds are 60%, the managers will rebalance. They'll sell some bonds and buy some more shares of those equities while those, those share prices are down. So this gets you back to that 50-50 mix. So anyway... When when you do this, you're certainly going to own more shares of those stocks. When so that when the market increases, your account is going to rebound. So in my mm. opinion, you know, Ben, I, I think rebalancing is a real key to long term success. Hey, folks, Lee Perkins here. If you've listened to this podcast for any amount of time, you know how much I hate taxes, and I know you probably do too. Our politicians are completely out of control. Their spending is off the chart. And you've got to be prepared for increasing taxes in the future. So we've written a book called Diffuse, Seven Steps to Protecting Your 401k or IRA from the Ticking Tax Time Bomb. You're going to want to grab a copy of this book and learn how you can protect yourself. Then you'll have to decide if you want to take action right now or if you'd rather wait until the IRS changes the rules of the game. Either way, the choice is yours. To get a free copy of the book, just text the word DEFUSE to 478-475-2050. That's D-E-F-U-S-E -E to 478-475-2050. And we'll send you a free copy. Thanks again for listening. Now back to the show. All right. Uh, third one here, target date funds. Let's talk about the target date funds. I know it's a very popular and easy 
kind of choice for investing because it feels like you get a customized solution because you pick out the day or the the year you think you might you plan on retiring and and you think hey this will this fund will kind of keep me on track with what I need to be to get to that point but how how useful are the target date, date funds yeah the, the target date funds have become really more popular in the last 8 to 10 years i've i've sort of Describe these as the the whole Ron Popeil, the set it and forget it, that guy that used to sell. I think yeah. it was a little rotisserie machine. <laughs> yeah. So these things were really created to help people who don't have any clue how to allocate their 401k. So, you know, most times when people enroll in a 401k at work, they, they don't know how to pick what they're going to invest in. In reality, what happens, most people simply just look at that menu um, and they they pick the fund that did the best last year. Um, and you know, th- honestly, that's what happens in most, most of the times that I see. Um, and, and it's probably, you know, people are a little bit overwhelmed by all the options. They don't know what the, the description of the funds mean. So they're a little bit intimidated and scared. And so that's what happens. And like I just said, I've seen people been there for 15 years. Uh, and I actually have some, seen some people that have been there for three, five, seven years, and the money's been sitting in a fixed account, sitting in cash since day one. So the target date funds are really sort of created to help these people, sort of to give them an easy way to pick an investment model by simply picking a, (coughs) excuse me, simply by picking a year range that they plan to retire in. So let's say you were going to retire in seven or eight years, well, then you might want to pick the 2030 fund. Um, or if you were going to retire longer than that, you would pick a date that's further into the future. So I think one of the things that's important to know is that all of these target date funds or the L funds that exist in the federal programs, TSP, their target date funds are called L funds, life, life cycle funds. All of these are nothing more than a predetermined allocation that just automatically gets more conservative as you approach that date. So there's really nothing customized to you whatsoever. So you you really could have two people with two totally different situations and two totally different tolerances for risk, but because they're retiring at the same time, they're going to have the exact same portfolio. So I just want people out there listening to be aware that it's not customized to you at all. Um, Almost every 401k plan has these uh, as one of their options, but there's there's nothing special about them. I don't use target date funds for my clients here uh, at our firm, but if you don't, if you've got a 401k and you don't really know what to do, a target date fund is a great option. All right, we're going through the top five 401k mistakes, and I know that uh, as we kind of talk through this, Lee, I, I think about the 401k and the taxes it's going to bring on later on. And I think a good time as we get ready to finish out with these last two to remind people about that ticking tax time bomb book offer. Yeah. So uh, as we talk about on the show, it's just a great piece for somebody who's interested in trying to pay less taxes over their lifetime. Um, It's an easy read. And we, we did the book a couple of years ago with a buddy of mine named Dan Capril. We co-authored the book with him, but if you're like a copy of that book, Text the word diffuse to 478 475 2050. Give us a good um, mailing address and we'll send that right out to you. All right, let's finish up with two more mistakes people make with the 401k. And that's really just assuming that the 401, that you're the client for the 401k plan, right? Like, did you think, hey, they're there to kind of work with me on my 401k? But ultimately, though, the employer is actually the client. Yeah, this is a big, a pretty big misconception that I see. The important thing knows, you know, if your company's got a 401k plan, they actually hired another company to be the administrator uh, of that plan, meaning they've outsourced this to uh, this whole 401k to another company. And every so often, they're going to shop that plan to some other provider because all of these companies charge the company that you work for. Uh, they charge them a fee to provide these services. And I'm, and I'm here to tell you, it, it's not cheap for your company to provide you with a 401k. Uh, it's it's expensive and it, it really can be a hassle. And so every so often they're going to shop around and see if they can get better service or maybe a better cost structure for them. So who's the client? You, you are spot on, Ben, that um, you said, you know, alluded to the fact that your employer is the client, mm-hmm. not you. Uh, your 401k company is going to try to keep your company happy so that they'll stay with them for as long as possible. 
Um, I would also add this, Ben, and this is a you know a pretty common misconception. A lot of people think that their 401k company can give them personalized planning advice. Um, and that's not the case. I mean, they can talk to you about how you want to allocate your account if you get somebody on the phone who who would do that. Uh, but they're not going to give you any kind of specific planning advice uh, that's designed for you. It's outside the scope of the services that they provide. So you've either got to do that yourself or you need to hire a financial professional to give you some planning advice. Yeah, that's a great point. A good thing to add there to that one. All right, one more here with your 401k. When you get the statement and you're looking through it, you might not see a lot of fees or costs on there. And you might just assume that they're minimal and you might not have any, but you can't just assume that, can you? No. And this is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine because, you know, every, every once in a while when I'm meeting with a, a prospect or, you know, prospective client, somebody comes in the office, they'll, they'll sort of ask me what my fee structure is and we'll go over that. And then they'll say, well, why do I, why should I pay you when my, my 401k company does everything for free? Um, and, and believe me, I, I understand the question because you don't see a fee on your 401k statement. So there's really two things that I'd like to address here. Number one is the fee. And number two is what you get for that fee. So l- let's start with a fee. So the reality is it, it's nobody is managing anybody's money for free. It, it just doesn't happen. There's there's not a company that is doing this as a charity. Um, they are in a business, you know, that is there to make money. Now, there may be the rare instance that your company may offset some of the fees and, and it, that happen inside of the 401k, um, but it's not very common. Fees inside of a 401k plan can range, of course, from low to high, but the problem is they're extremely hard to find. Uh, When you get your statement, chances are you're not going to see a single fee. Why? Well, it's because a lot of those fees are usually built into the fund that are, you know, the funds are available in your plan. And so you may never even see them. Mm -hmm. Um, These are called internal expenses and and these can really be very high. And so it can, it can be a, a real problem, especially if you don't know about them. I'll tell you this, being several years ago when I was doing public workshops, I would show a clip from an old 60 Minutes uh, episode. They did a piece about the hidden expenses of 401k plans. Hmm. Um, and you can just Google 60 Minutes hidden 401k fees and, and you'll okay. find it. It's a two minute and 31 second clip. It's great. Uh, the thumbnail is a, it's a, I don't want to say he's a scraggly looking guy, but he's a little bit older fellow with a, a, a gray beard. Uh, and he talks in detail about this and sort of exposes the problem. So there are fees. You just might not see them. Um, the second point is what you get for that fee. So once you realize it, that you are paying something, then it's really time for you to sort of figure out and assess what you're getting for what you're paying. So inside of your 401k or, or your TSP, if you're a federal employee, you're you're getting you know an account you're just getting the money management that's that's it Mm -hmm. Um, you might get a snazzy looking website and you can see all sorts of charts and graphs but what you're not going to get is any kind of personalized planning so really what happens and what i see happening in the real world is somebody doesn't know that they're paying one and a half percent in in hidden 401k fees um and really for that same amount, they can hire me or hire somebody else mm-hmm. or somebody like me that can give them personalized advice for what they're paying now. But the difference is with me being, you, you know, if, if you've got a, if I, if you're a client of mine and I send you my state statement or your statement with my firm, that fee is right there for you to see. So, you know, you're going to see exactly what you're paying for what we're doing for you. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a good point. And all these things, these aren't all the mistakes people make, but some of the more common ones. So if you haven't taken a look at your 401k in a little bit, now's a great time to do that. And if you need someone to help you with that, you can just go talkwithlead.com. Just visit that website. It's a good chance to get on Lee's schedule and, and start that process uh, as well. But if you want to call 478-254-3550 is that number. Uh, let's get to one mailbag question before we get out of here, uh, Lee. This one came in from Jerry in Stockbridge. Said I'm retiring soon, and I asked my financial advisor when I should start thinking about my Social Security. 
He seemed completely befuddled that I even asked him the question and didn't seem to have any insight at all. What am I missing here? Shouldn't that be a basic part of retirement planning? Yeah, Jerry, this it, it 100% should be a just a basic question that he should be able to give you some guidance on. It, it probably tells me that he is just a, maybe just a stockbroker, um, maybe been doing that a long time, has just never immersed himself into learning anything about Social Security. In my opinion, it's probably time for you to look for somebody else because you're going to face other challenges. You know, if you're considering, you know, the whole Social Security claiming thing right now, you're going to face some more challenges as you go along. And it sounds like your guy may not, um, may not be equipped to handle that. So um, I'd love to chat with you. You can, you know, just go to talkwithlee.com and, and book a 15 minute call. I, I can go into a little bit more detail and help you with, with that question. But if it's not me, man, I'd, I'd tell you to reach out to somebody else. Yeah. And I think it's a good, just to get a second opinion, just to see in case anything else has been overlooked yeah, in the process absolutely. as well. All right, let's close out this episode of My Retirement Clarity. We appreciate you listening. Visit MyRetirementClarity.com for all of the podcasts there. And also, if you want to schedule a time to meet with Lee, you can always do that at TalkWithLee.com. I will get out here on that note, Lee. As always, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. And uh, enjoy the new house. Thanks, Ben. I appreciate it, man. Lee Perkins here, and I want to thank you so much for tuning into the show today. If you like our podcast, we would be honored if you would share the show with others. And one great way to do that is by posting the show to your social media pages or by just telling others about it. Either way, we would really appreciate it. And of course, if you do enjoy the show, we would appreciate it if you would give us a five-star review. And this certainly helps other people like you find our show. And if you want to learn a little more about our firm and how we help people have the best retirement they can possibly have, Go check us out at www.myretirementclarity.com. There are a lot of great resources that you can access directly on the website. And of course, if you want to have a conversation with me, you can visit www.talkwithlee.com. And this will take you directly to my calendar. And there you can schedule a 15-minute phone call so I can learn a little bit more about your situation. Of course, everybody is not a great fit for our firm. But if I think we can add value and put you in a better situation, I'll let you know, and we can certainly talk about the next steps. So thanks again for tuning into the show, and we'll catch you next time. Investment advisory services are offered by JL Perkins Wealth Management, a registered investment advisor and insurance agency. Information is for illustrative purposes only and does not constitute tax, legal, or investment advice. Always consult with a qualified tax, legal, or investment professional before taking any action.